Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to this uh, presentation and welcome to our YouTube channel. All right. So in this uh, presentation, we want to solve um, we want to solve um, the Cambridge IGC SE paper, which is in mathematics, uh, paper three, which is a, a core mathematics, a core mathematics. That is what we want to solve. Uh, take note, the year is 2021, the exam, which was held in February, March. Okay. So as you start answering, it's always important that you read through these instructions. All right, so let's start. Let's start. Um, we are saying, number one, 20 students choose their favorite science subjects. The results are shown in the bar charts. Okay, we are able to see the bar chart there. Okay, so we are able to see that bar chart. Let me just zoom it. Okay, so that is our bar chart. Um, Question A, uh, work out how many more students choose biology than physics. So when you look at biology here, it is 11. When you look at physics, it is six, all right? So to find the number of students, um, of students that do biology, more than those that do physics. We are going to say how many I take borrowed, it is 11, minus physics, it is six. What we get? Five. And our answer is it, five here. Good. Uh, then the next question is, write down the fraction of students whose favorite science subject is chemistry. So those that do chemistry are how many? There are three, you can see from here, this is three. So three by the total number of students is 20. So that is three over 20 as our fraction, all right? One of the uh, 20 students is big at random. Write the probability that this student did not choose borrowed. So one, the probability that this person did not choose Bowroch. In short, we are talking about Bowroch complement, right? Not in Bowroch. So how many did not choose Bowroch? It simply means that, that uh, chose chemistry and the uh, physics. So those that chose chemistry are three. Those that chose physics are six, but the total number is 20. So when you add this, you are going to get nine over 20, all right? Alternatively, you can say, those that did not choose borrowed, you can say they're not borrowed, is equal to the total probability as one minus probability of those that chose borrowed, which will be equal to one minus the probability of 11, over 20 and you get your 9 over 20. Okay, D. Only one of these averages, that is mean, mode, and uh, median, mode, and mean can be found for these results. Which of these, that is Roman numeral one. Uh, write down the average that can be found. It is easy to find the mode, all right? Uh, find the average for these uh, results. So what is the mode here? All right, which subject has got the highest frequency? You can see that the, 
the, the highest bar goes up to 11. So that is our mode. But um, what subject is giving us the highest frequency? It is the biology. So our mode, our mode is biology. Biology. Right? Explain why. Uh, why the range cannot be found. The reason is, you know, range, right, is the difference between the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. However, these are missing. However, these are missing. So, hence we can't find the, the range because the highest value and the lowest value are not there. Hence, we can't find the, the range, and that is our answer. We go to E. The results are to be shown in a pie chart. The results are to be shown in the pie chart. Complete the table below. So this is Bowroach. How many, um, how many, uh, choose or chose biology, they are 11. Those that went for chemistry, they are three. Those that went for physics are six. Now, here we need to find the pie chart sector angle. You know, for a circle, we have got 360 degrees as in the total sum of the angles. Meaning that for the for this sector, Bowroch, it's going to be 11 over three, um, over the number of students, which is 20, multiplied by 360 degrees. This will produce 180 degrees. So here it is 180 degrees. So if you do the same to, to chemistry, you're going to get 54 degrees. That is the three over 20 by 360 degrees. So for the last one, you're going to get uh, 1080 degrees. Okay. So you get your three marks. The other one is saying uh, complete the pie chart below. So we have got this angle that we must write 198, uh, 108, and um, 54. So you can see that 198 is greater than 180. So if we had to extend a line here, you know that this is 180, isn't it? But we want 198, meaning that we have 18 more. So it might uh, be somewhere there. So meaning that this angle here, this angle here is 198 degrees. Uh, Alternatively, you can measure using a protractor, and this is biology. Then the next angle is 108. You know that if we draw a line, this is 180, all right? I mean, this is 98 degrees. Mean that to have the 108, uh, it might be somewhere here. So this is not needed. Meaning that this is our 108 degrees, and this is um, this is a sector for physics. Then the, the last one is the 54 degrees, all right? And this is the chemistry. 
So it means that when you add these angles, when you add these three angles, the answer will be 360 degrees. You can work out that. Okay, so we move to the next question. Um, a family go on a skiing holiday to America. The hotel has eight forty eight hundred and forty rooms. Um, seven hundred and thirty five rooms are occupied. All right. Calculate the percentage of rooms that are occupied. So we know that the rooms are occupied are seven hundred and thirty five. 735, the total number of rooms is 840. But now, because we're talking about percentage, you multiply by 100. And um, once you work out that on your calculator, uh, you're going to get 87.5. So this is 87.5%. The temperature in the hotel is 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, the temperature in the hotel is 26.7 degrees Celsius warmer at the top of the mountain. The temperature at the top of the mountain is 3.2 degrees Celsius colder at the bottom of the mountain. Then work out the temperature at the bottom of the mountain. So to work out the temperature at the bottom of the mountain, we are going to say the temperature of the hotel is 21 degrees Celsius minus the temperature of the hotel when warmer at the top of the mountain, which is 26. Point seven degrees Celsius. Then we add it to the temperature at the top of the mountain when colder than at the bottom of the mountain. So we add 3.2 degrees Celsius. And this will give us negative 2.5 degrees Celsius. So this is our answer. So negative 2.5 degrees Celsius. All right, it's as simple as that. Um, the next question is uh, on this uh, chart or table. So we have equipment, higher cost in dollars, adult and uh, children or child uh, ski equipment, snowboard equipment, helmet, so on and so forth. Now, there are two adults and one child in the family. They hire all the equipment, right? Okay, so we have got two adults. So adults are two. Adults are two. Uh, we have got a child. In short, we have got one. We have a child, that is Z, one. In short. All right. Uh, the child skis for three days and the snowboards for four days. Both adults ski for seven days. All right. All the three of them hire a helmet for 70 days. All right. So, um, we are saying work out the total cost of the equipment hire. The equipment hire for the family. 
work out the total cost of the equipment hire for the family. So, uh, since there are two adults, and the adults ski for seven days. Now, as an adult, if you ski for seven days, um, you get, you need this information, take note. If you ski for seven days as an adult, it is 128. But since there are two of them, so we are going to say two by 128. This is how much you're going to pay for the ski equipment. And what do we get? 256. Okay, good. Then the, this child skis for three days. So, skiing for uh, three days, it is 46 dollars. All right? And snowboards for four days. So for snowboard equipment for four days, it is 720 uh, $70.2. dollars So when you add the total here for this child, you are going to get $256. $256. So take note of these amounts. So we have got this amount and this one. Okay, so we are saying all the three of them hire a helmet for seven days. So for adults, a helmet for seven days is 20. Now, because there are two adults, so you are going to say two by 20.70, what we get? Get 41.4, all right? Then for a child, the helmet, for a child, um, for seven days, it is uh, 16.70, which is it, like 16.7. So these are the costs of the equipment higher for the family. So what does it mean to find the total cost now? So total we we'll add 16.70 plus 41.4 plus 256 plus um, here take note, this amount is not correct. This is supposed to be uh, one, one, 17.8. So 256 plus 117.8. So when you add this, you're going to get $431.9. So this is our answer here. So 431.9, that is the total cost. Okay. A ski lift, when full taxi, at 100%, so when it is 100%, it takes 4,000 passengers per hour. This lift works for 10 days a day. One day, the lift, this lift is 90% full, so 90%, all right, full, mean that it is 90 over 100 by 4,000 for three hours, so you multiply by three. Because per hour is 4,000 per hour. But here we're talking about 90% for three hours. Plus, uh, and 75% when full for seven, uh, for seven hours. So 75 over 100 plus, uh, 
75 over 100 multiplied by 4,000 times C, seven hours. What is the amount that you are going to get? When you work out this, you are going to get 10,800 plus, when you work out this part, you're going to get 21,000. So this will give you 31,800, all right? So this is the amount. At one thousand, um, at one thousand eight hundred passengers. All right. So here we are talking about work, uh, work out the number of passengers who take the, the lift that day. So it is at one thousand eight hundred. I don't know if I read that as I started answering. Okay. E. The family uh, buy their lift passes before the holiday for a total of 51,400 rupees. In America, the passes cost a total of um, 604 dollars. The exchange rate is one rupee to 0 0.0129 dollars right show that the family save 1620 rupees collect the nearest 10 rupees by buying the passes before the holiday so what we are saying is that one rupee is equal to 0 0.0129 dollars now This family has spent this to buy the, this lift passes. But they are saying the same lift uh, passes will cost you $684 in, uh, yeah, in America. But what is this amount in rupees? So we can convert that. We are going to say $684 is equal to, maybe we say X, and try to find X. Meaning that X will be equal to um, 684 rupees, uh, rupees divided by 0 0.0129. Of course, the dollars will cancel. They are, they, they are going to divide. And this, is going to give us um, five three zero two three point two five eight one. This is how much it's going to give you. So in America, it's going to give you this much. But if you were to buy it direct before the holiday. Suppose it's in India, you spend this. So meaning that it is less, it is cheaper to buy in advance than buying it in America. So if you bought it in advance, you'll be saving something. In this case, how much are you going to save? That is the question. So to see or to find the amount that is saved, allow me to write here, we are going to say 53, Uh, 53,023.02581 minus uh, 51,400. This amount is going to give you 1623.2581. Five five eight one four, but we must see uh, right to the nearest ten rupees. Meaning that we say this is one ten. You drop a line, consider three as zero. Zero plus two be two. So you have got one six two zero. You add a zero before a point. Rupees. Hence, see shown.
All right, F. We are saying the height H meters of a mountain is 2642 meters. Correct the nearest meter. Complete this statement about the value of H. So you need to find the value here and the value here. So you can see that this is the minimum and this is the maximum. Hence, they want us to find the upper limit and lower limit. How do we do that? First, we must find the absolute error. We'll find the absolute error. The absolute error would be one times the least unit of measurement of 2,642 is a one, all right? One meter. And this will give you 0 0.5 meters. So to find the upper limit, upper limit, you are going to say 2,642 meters plus 0 0.5 meters. What do we get? It gets uh, 2642.5 meters. Then you need to get the lower limit. 2642 meters minus 0.5 meters. What do we get? We're going to get 2641.5 meters. So these are our limits. So here I'll put my lower limit, which is 2641.5 meters. Here I'll put 2642.5 meters. Then we are done with that one. All right. Okay, number three. The diagram shows three triangles, A, B, and D, C. On a green, triangle A is shaded. Triangle A is shaded. I think we're able to see that. Okay. Triangle A is shaded. A, measure angle W. So you are supposed to use uh, a protractor. When you measure this angle, this angle will be 72 degrees. All right, so here it is 72 degrees. Then explain why B is congruent to, to C. Explain why B is congruent. Explain why B is congruent to C. So when you look at B and C, so you realize that this side corresponds to this one. And now when you check, when you try to count the lines here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The sides are the same, all right? So even their corresponding sides, when you check them, when you check these, when you check these, they are the same. Even if you, are, you want, you can measure them. So the reason why B is congruent to triangle C is that the corresponding sides, corresponding sides, are equal. 
Or if you don't want to use equal, you can say or the same. The same. Okay, we are done. We go to C. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto B. Triangle A onto B. Okay, so. So you can see that A has been light onto this one. So it is an enlargement, all right? It is an enlargement. By what size has it, has it been enlarged? We need to find the scale factor. So you are going to find this distance, for example, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you are going to say nine divided by this one is one, two, three, three. So our scale factor is three. All right? But you need, you need the center also to describe it fully. So if you join the corresponding points, for example, this point to this one, all right? And also, um join like that um you also try to join this it's going to take you at this point so the center there is negative three our center is negative three comma four that is our center so for us to describe it fully, you must acknowledge that it is a, um, it is enlargement, enlargement with scale factor, scale factor of three and center negative three comma four that is our center then also describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle b onto uh onto c so b onto c you can see clearly that this C is a rotation of B. But look at the quadrant where it is. It has moved from the second quadrant, has gone into the first quadrant, as well as what? The fourth quadrant. That is if you are moving in a clockwise direction. If you need for it to move in a clockwise direction, say it has moved from there to here, then from this point to that point. Meaning that it is a rotation at an angle of 180 degrees. Now with, an, with a rotation of 180 degrees, the direction is not important because you still arrive at the same answer. But now we must try to find the, the angle, all right? So the way you need to find the angle is you identify the corresponding A, sides and bisect them. So you might join this side to that side, maybe this side to this one, try to bisect. So when you bisect these lines, they automatically meet at the origin. So when you try to bisect, when you try to bisect a line, all right, when you try to bisect these two lines, automatically it will take you to the origin. So you bisect the corresponding sides, then join the two points, it will take you to the origin. So meaning that our center is, is the origin. So we are saying this is a what? A rotation, a rotation. Um, 
of 180 degrees at 0, 0, as our center, as center. Okay, so D, on the grid, a shape A after a translation, on the grid, draw the, uh, the image of the shape A after a translation vector, after a translation by the vector seven comma negative one, all right? So we can use different approaches. Okay, so. A translation vector of seven comma uh, seven comma negative one. So we are dealing with seven comma negative one. This is our translation vector, and we are trying to translate a. So to translate a, you are going to move each point seven meters to the right and one step. I mean seven steps to the right, one step downwards. Okay, meaning that for this one, I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but one step downwards here. So that is where we are going to put a mark. For this one, we'll do the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then you come downwards, which is this, all right? Then for this one, we do the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but you come down once. So this is where we'll put a mark. Then we are going to join here. That is the image. So we can even say A1, all right? Subscript T1, I hope that is okay. A subscript T1. Then the second question we are saying, a shape A, you draw the image of the shape A after a reflection in the mirror line Y is equal to negative Y. So we want to deal with this one. In the mirror line Y is equal to negative one. So what do we do? In the middle line, y is equal to negative one. Okay, so this is our middle line. Y is equal to negative one. Okay, y is equal to negative one. So to find the image of a, of a reflection, you know the distance from the object to the image, I mean the distance from the middle line to the image, and the distance from the middle line to the object must be the same moving at 90 degrees. So meaning that this point, this point and this one, they are at 90 degrees. This one and this one, they are uh, and the middle line, they are at 90 degrees. This and this one, they are at 90 degrees. So what we do is, you find the distance from the middle line to this point. So you have got one, two, three, four. So as a reflection, it is the opposite of that image. So we'll say one, two, three, four. This is where we need to put a point, all right? Then the next one is this point. Again, it is four. One, two, three, four, meaning that it will be here. For this one, it is one, two, three, four, five, six. So from here, We'll say one, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is where we're supposed to put, then we we'll erase here. Let me erase. Okay, so we'll draw like that. Of course, you use a ruler, and this one becomes our A2. I hope uh, that is okay. I hope that is fine. 
Okay, so we go to the next the next question or the next part of our question. The next part of our question. Okay, the scale drawing shows the positions of Kendra's house K and the Ratka's house L on a map. All right. Uh, Jasmine's house J is on a bearing of zero, uh, zero three six degrees from K and on a bearing of 284 degrees from L. Mark the position of J. So what you need to do is get your protractor using this line, measure 36 degrees. So 36 degrees would, would take you somewhere here. All right? That is like your 36 degrees. So as an angle, we we'll write it as 60 degrees. Then for, because we are saying bearing of K, a J from K, meaning that J could be maybe somewhere here. And since this angle is just a 90, it cannot come this side. So the bearing from this line to that line, where our J should be, it's supposed to be that. Then the bearing of J from L, meaning that if we were to put a line maybe here, the bearing from this point to that point must be 284. So, so if you want to measure, you can measure this space as your 180 degrees. Then all right, you know that you are dealing with what? 284. So you can even say 284 minus 180. What do you get? You get your 4, you get your 0, you get your 104. So from here again, you can measure your 104. All right? So your 104 might take you from this point to measure 104. So a 104 might take you maybe there. So meaning that your bearing, your bearing is from this. This is the bearing you're talking about, which is the 284. So we are saying 284 degrees. This is our bearing. Okay. And in this case, your J should be somewhere here. Okay? Then the actual distance between K and L, so the actual distance between K and L, so the actual distance from K to L They are saying the actual distance from K to L, it is 9,600 meters. But when you measure this with a ruler, you are going to find it to be 12 centimeters. All right? That is our diagram. Then they are saying complete the scale. One centimeter represents what? So we are saying according to our diagram, 12 centimeters is representing, it is representing 9,600 meters, all right? How about one centimeter then? We can say this is equal to X, meaning that our X will be equal to, the centimeters I will divide. Our X is in 9,600 meters divided by what? 12, and what do we get? You are going to get 800 meters. So it means one centimeter represents 
800 meters or we already have meters there. Okay. Uh, Kendra walks from K. Walks from K. Uh, walks from K to A. What the constant speed of? 4.5 kilometers per hour. 4.5 kilometers per hour. So this person walks from K to L at a constant speed of 4 kilometers per hour. Okay, sorry, I was trying to zoom out. Okay. She leaves K at 10.15. So she leaves this point at 10.15 hours. All right? Okay. Work out the time she arrives at L. Work out the time she arrives at L. So, since we are talking about hours, you know the distance there from K to L, it is 9,600 meters. All right? So you can convert that to kilometers. So we can say one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Now, we have 9,600 meters. What is this equal to? We'll say x, meaning that our x is equal to 9,600 meters divided by 1,000, and x is equal to 9.6 kilometers. Of course, the meters will divide, will remain with kilometers. So, meaning that the distance from k to that in terms of kilometers, it is 9.68 kilometers. But we know that according to this information, for every one hour, this person covers 4.5 kilometers. So for every one hour, there is 4.5 kilometers that is covered. All right? So how long then will this person take to cover a distance of 9.6 kilometers? We'll say X, uh, maybe Y. So our Y will be equal to the kilometers will divide. So it will be 9.6 divided by 4.5. Once you do that, you're going to get 2.8 hours. So in this case, this is the um, two hours, in short, eight minutes. 80 minutes. This is what we are going to get. So this person starts off at 10. When you add two hours, it will take you to 12.15. When you add eight minutes, it's going to take you to 12.23 hours. That is the time this person will arrive at L. Okay, so another question. Kendra and Latika leave Ratika's house at 15 to go to the cinema. They walk for 20 minutes at a constant speed of uh, 4.5 kilometers per hour. Work out the distance they cover. So they start from here at 15 hours and they walk for 20 minutes. All right? But um they have only taken what they they have only taken 20 minutes what is the distance that they are going to cover so what we are saying is um these people they are working only for 20 minutes 
So work out the distance they uh, work out the distance they walk. So in one hour themselves, they walk a distance of 4.5 kilometers. All right. Then you know that this one hour is 60 minutes. In short, we are saying for 60 minutes, they walk for 4.5 kilometers. What about for 20 minutes then? We'll say X. So when you work out that, you're going to have X being on 20 by 4.5, this is a minute or cancel divided by 60. And the answer here is going to give you 1.5. You get 1.5 kilometers. That is the distance you're going to cover. All right. After walking for 20 minutes, then they then run a distance of six kilometers, uh, six kilometers at a constant speed for 40 minutes. Draw the, their journey to the cinema on the travel craft. So they are starting off here and take 20 minutes. So you can see that from here to there, it is one hour, which is like 60 minutes. And there are how many lines? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's check, let's count properly. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So 60 divided by six, it is 10. So I mean that this is like 10 minutes. This is uh, 15, 10, uh, 15, 10. So here it is 15, 10. The other one here will be 15, 20. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, so take note of this time. All right. So these people start off from here at first and take 20 minutes. This is 10. So up to somewhere here. From zero, this is 10, 20, so up somewhere here. But the distance, remember, covered in the first 20 minutes, it is in um, 1.5, and 1.5 is here. So when if we were to draw a graph for the first information of the first part, it's going to be this up to there. Then we are saying. They then run a distance of six kilometers. Six kilometers. All right. At a constant speed for 40 minutes. Okay. They then run a distance of six kilometers for. 40 minutes. So from here, you add 40. Uh, take note first. This is 10 and this is our 20. So 1.5 is here. So, so from here, you add 40. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. Meaning that they will reach up to this point, or to take them to 16 hours up to this point. This is where our 40 is. We don't know exactly. All right. So, but from here, we are saying they cover a distance of 60 kilometers. Okay. They, they cover a distance of six kilometers. So, this is the, like one kilometer, this is the 1.5, so one six. So you know from here to there it is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is where the six is going to be. But the time taken is 20 minutes. So from here, it will keep on now. Uh, the curve will keep on going upwards. It will get, uh, keep on getting uh, going upwards. Okay, let me just change the color. So, in short, take note of this point. So it will keep on, you need to draw with a ruler, it will go upwards like that. Okay, that is the first part. Okay. All right. So that is the first part, so up to somewhere here for 40 minutes. Okay. All right. So this is where we are supposed to end for the first part. Okay. Let me just zoom, zoom.
Okay, so sorry. Uh, so it's supposed to be from here to this point. Yeah, you need to use a ruler. Yeah, that is where our graph will be. All right. Yeah, we've answered that is the part B there, where we're asked to draw their journey to the cinema on the travel graph. Good. Number two. Kendra and Radhika leave the cinema at 1805. So they leave the cinema at 1805. So this is 18, this is 1810, 1805 is this. What does it mean? It means from this period up to that period, they were resting. All right? So they leave the, the cinema at 18.05, which is this one, okay? They travel back to Ratika's house in it at a person speed, at a person speed of 30 kilometers per hour, meaning that in one hour, in one hour, they'll cover 30 kilometers. But you know that the distance at this point, it is 7.5 kilometers. Okay? The 7.5 kilometers. So, uh, you are going to say, how many hours then would it, would it take these people to cover a distance of 7.5 kilometers? You are going to say X. Right, so your x is equal to, um, you say, 30 divided by 7.5. So you need to calculate, let me just calculate it. So you need to calculate, you divide 30, 30 divided by 7.5. All right, 80 divided by Okay, so please take note, it's not supposed to be 30 divided by 7.5, but it's supposed to be 7.5 divided by 30. 7.5 divided by 30. So this is going to give you X will be equal to 0 0.2 hours, but you can convert that to minutes by multiplying that 0 0.25 times 60, you multiply by 60, but maybe you get the number of minutes, all right? And once you do that, are going to get 15 minutes. We're going to get 15 minutes. Meaning that from this point, they will take 15 minutes. From this point, they will take 15 minutes. So from here, they will take 15. This is 5, 10, 15. This is the number of minutes they will take. So if you come down, it will be at this point, at this point. So meaning that this line has to drop now coming down. Because you draw it with a, a ruler, coming down. Meanwhile, at this, during this period when they were resting, you can connect like that. Okay, so. This is what we need to do as we are asked down there to complete the travel graph. All right, to complete the travel graph. This is what we needed to do. Okay, so 
we can move to the next question. And move to the next question. Uh, complete the table for the values y is equal to negative x squared minus x minus plus four. All right. So what do we need? You say y is equal to, you know our x is negative five. So I'll say negative, negative five squared minus negative five plus 14. So once you do that, you're going to get uh, negative six. So here there'll be negative six. If you do, if you repeat that process for four, you get two. For negative one, you get 14. Here you get 14. And here you get two. Here you get negative six. That is your answer. Get T, here you get T, two. Okay. On the grid, draw the graph of y is equal to negative x squared minus x plus four for that range. So the only thing that we need to do is to be plotting. So we'll be plotting negative five comma negative six up to the end. So, The first one, is negative five comma negative six. So negative five comma negative six. So negative six is somewhere here. So this is the point. And the next one is negative four comma two. So negative four comma two. This is the point, this is the line. So somewhere here. Then uh, the next one is negative three comma eight. So this is eight. And this is my negative three, if I were to check. So at this point, yeah, that is where that should be. Then we have negative two comma 12. So negative two comma 12. So two, negative two is somewhere here. Then 12. 12 is this point. So this is what we are going to have. The next one is negative one comma 14. So negative one comma 14. Is I don't mind my hand. So it's this line, sorry for that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me move on. Okay. And negative uh, positive 14 is this. This is what we are going to get. Then the next one is 0, 14. So this is straightforward this is this point. Then the other one is 1, 2. 1, 2 is here. No, no, 1, 12. Sorry. So 1, 12 is somewhere here. And the next one is 2 comma 8. 2 comma 8, somewhere here. Then we have got uh, 3 comma 2. This point. And 4 comma negative 6. Somewhere here. So that is the graph that we have. So we need to draw this graph. So we need to use a free hand. And draw it. It is your free hand and draw it. Of course, you can do that on your computer, but on an exam, you're supposed to do it manually. So you need to name this as y is equal to negative x squared minus x plus 4. 
many are done. Okay, so that's that. The next question is write down the equation of the symmetry of the graph. If you want, you can pick it from the graph or you use the formula X is negative B over 2A. So since our formula is Y is equal to, our function is Y is equal to negative X squared minus X plus four. With a quadratic function, you know our A is negative one, our B is negative one. So when you substitute your negative, negative one over two A, our A is negative one as well. And what we get, we are going to get negative half or 0 0.5. So the equation is equal to X is equal to negative half or X is equal to negative 0 0.5. That is the equation. Right. Find the coordinates of the highest point on the on the on the graph. Here, what they want is to find the turning point. Point. Okay, and the turning point is is found by the turning point of x as well as the turning point of y. So the turning point of x it is this that we have already calculated. So you need to find the turning point of y by substituting this value into the, the function. So the function is, so this is the function I'm talking about. All right, so how do you substitute? You're going to say negative half squared minus negative half plus 14. And the answer here is, 14.25, meaning that the coordinates are negative 0 0.5 and 14.25 uh, or negative half comma 4, 1 over 4. This is, these are the coordinates. Use your graph to solve the equation uh, negative x squared minus x plus 14 is equal to negative two. So you realize that this is our function, which is y. So the whole lot of this one is y. So we say y is equal to negative two. So I'll go to the graph and identify where y is negative two. So this is what negative two, you draw a line so that you meet the graph at that point. We'll draw a line and meet the graph at that point. You can even label this as y is equal to negative two. At this point here, the point of intersection, point of intersection, at the point of intersection here, when you check the value of x here, you realize that the value of x will be negative. Somewhere negative 4.4. And when you come here and check for the value of x somewhere here, uh, it's 3.6. So those are the values that we need. Negative 4.4, negative 4.4 or 3.6. Okay, so we can go to the next question. Equation six. Okay, which is our last question? Okay, so the diagram shows a point P a shape S and the lines A and B, lines A and B on a one square centimeter bridge. Okay, so uh, line A is parallel to line B, 
We are able to see that uh, this line, they're saying it is parallel to that. Explain what, explain what parallel lines means. So parallel lines simply means the lines have got no point of intersection, all right? The lines cannot intersect, cannot intersect, intersect. Or you can say they do not have, have a common point, a common point, and all that is okay. Then we need to write the, the coordinates of P. The coordinates of P, the coordinates of P are, so if you see where P is, Y is eight, then X is five. So P is five comma eight. Those are the coordinates, All right? Those are our coordinates, five comma eight. Five comma eight. Write down the, uh, the mathematical name for this shape. The shape, we're able to see it. This shape S, it is a parallelogram. So it is a parallelogram. All right. Then the next thing is work out the area for shape S. So this parallelogram, for us to find the area, we can still use the formula for, I think a trapezium can hold where this one becomes our height. Then the distance from there to there could be our A. And then the distance from this point to that point could be our B. All right, so what's the formula for a trapezium? The formula for a trapezium is area is half times H times A plus B. All right, so our area is about half times what is our height. You can go back to our diagram. The height you can read from two here to five. When you subtract, you get three. Meanwhile, our A, it's from this point. So it is one, two, three, four, five. So our A is five. Uh, our B is one, two, three, four, five. So our B is equal to five. All right. So our height is three by our A um, is five plus five. And the answer will be 15 square centimeters. So here we write 15. All right, maybe we can still do, yeah, we still have another question. Uh, find the gradient of A. There are a lot of approaches that you can use to find the gradient. So, for A, we can use a lot of approaches. Uh, if you look at this, you can try to create this triangle like this. You know, gradient is um, y divided by x. So our y here is 2 divided by our x is one, two, three, four, five. Our x is five. All right, that is our gradient. Or alternatively, we can use the formula for a gradient, which is gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, All right? Yeah, so you can say, here, we need the coordinates. The first one is this point, which is 6, 0. Uh, sorry, the, the opposite. Supposed to be 0, 6. Then you can pick on this one. For P, uh, we got uh, 
5,8 and say 5,8. If this is one and that is two, meaning that y2 is a six minus eight divided by x2 is zero minus five. Our gradient will be equal to negative two over five. So that is our gradient. So our gradient is negative two over five. So our gradient is um, is equal to two over five, sorry. Two over five or 0 0.4 if you want. That done the equation of line A. So we can use the standard form of the equation, which is y is equal to mx plus what? C. Um, so when you look, come to our graph, when you come to our graph, our y-intercepts, our intercept is six, all right? And our gradient is two over five. Then, so we are going to say, y is equal to our gradient is two over five, x plus y intercept is six. So y is equal to two over five, x plus six. Okay, let's see, move on. All right, I think we can end here. Then the last two will be done in the next video. The last two will be done in the next video. Thanks so much. Please look for the next video, which has got questions from seven to nine. Thank you. Subscribe for more videos and lessons. Subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, you can contact me on 0978-56-58-76 or 0979-67-8809. You can contact us on these lines. Thank you so much and may God bless you all. Thank you.